Yeah, exactly. You're on the front line, so to speak, in Texas. And uh, we've seen some pictures from Brownsville. This is the thing. We're seeing what's happening on the borders. We're seeing the people. We're hearing from the potential migrants and from the border officials. Yet it seems that in the White House, they are in denial. Have a look at this from the president and the vice president. Things are going at the border, sir. Much better, than, much, much better than you all expected. Do you have any plans to visit no, the border? No, I think. Pardon me? Do you have any plans to visit the border? Not in the near term, no. No, it'll just be disruptive, not anything else. You know, I hear that everything in the last couple of days is going rather smoothly, given what the concerns were. And the bottom line, however, is that the issue of immigration falls squarely within the responsibility of the United States Congress. Going smoothly, not a problem. Neither of them going down there. Kamala Harris is supposed to be in charge of this issue. It just seems that they're completely out of touch with reality. Yeah, how dare they laugh and diminish this problem? Uh, it is horrible, especially here in Texas. The emergency rooms are over flooded. The school systems are flooded with students who don't speak English. Crime and drugs are out of control. And this is spreading to, uh, to cities all around this country. Every single city in this country is going to be a border city within five to 10 years. Something needs to change now. There is the hum humanitarian aspect uh, too. I mean, I don't disagree with your f you, you, the way you you outline the facts that uh, there are drug running and criminal elements involved when you have such massive numbers of illegal migration. But there's also the horrible humanitarian impact because understandably people want to get to America just as good people have wanted to get to Australia. But it's that sense of false hope and the danger that people are put through in order to cross that border because the country can't patrol it and have the enforcement in there that is deserved to control migration. And you get horrible situations. Let's have a look at this report highlighting some of that humanitarian aspect. Families in Matamoros, just across the border from Brownsville, are carrying what little they have. This baby placed inside a suitcase as they make the dangerous crossing of the Rio Grande River. He takes us to the river point where we witness a family placing a baby on an inflatable mattress attempting to make the cross. So this young mother right here just got to the camp today and she's already choosing to go across. She says she just doesn't have the time to wait for an appointment. She has a one-year-old with her and two young little girls that already went across. Just shocking, Kristen. I mean, who could blame these people? Of course they'd want to go live in America, but that's not the way to do it. You've got to do it in an organized and orderly fashion. Yes, they are being told, come on up. This is the time to do it. We've got Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They will let you in. If you wait too much longer, you could have Donald Trump again or another Republican. So they are all rushing up right now. And yes, uh, every week, every few days, I read stories about uh, human smugglers having their uh, stash houses of human bodies uh, busted here in Houston, where they just keep, you know, way too many people in these crowded spaces. And, uh, you know, they keep them in trailer trucks as they wait for the family families back home to send money to the smugglers. It's awful. Kids and girls and women are getting raped uh, regularly on the journey north. But we cannot diminish the, the, the terror that this, is having, that this is imposing on American cities as well. Kristen, I've got to get your top of mind thoughts on the Durham report uh, out in the last 24 hours. It tells us, I suppose, what a lot of us already knew. That is that the investigations into collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia were all based on next to nothing. Yes, this is something that we already kind of all knew, uh, but it just confirms, Chris, that the justice system in this country is subservient to politics, at least at the federal level. It is truly frightening. Uh, the FBI had no real evidence of collusion before they launched the investigation into Trump. And remember, that probe, that Russia probe, the phony one, it tore this country apart for years. It really did. And now that we have all the facts and we know that it was indeed a totally phony investigation based on no facts. The media doesn't care. There's barely any coverage of it on the mainstream media. And the same people who were fuming about Donald Trump colluding with the Russians just a few years ago, uh, they just kind of roll their eyes and have nothing to say about it now that we have the actual facts. The media in your country and elsewhere around the world, including Australia, still pretend it was true. That's their narrative and they're sticking by it and they don't want to let the facts get right. in the way of their story. Thanks again, Kristen. Always good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Chris.